In December 2019, the United States of America founded a new branch of its military forces, the Space Force. This even became a joke, inspiring a TV series parodying the possible tasks of this American Space Force. But despite the jokes involving this new military force, it's worth asking, why did the United States find it necessary to create a Space Force? The answer is, for the same reason any country has a military force to prepare for wars and ensure the security of the territories controlled by these military forces. And the Space Force serves to protect American infrastructure in space, which includes military intelligence, infrastructure, and communication satellites. And among these communication satellites is the GPS system, which you probably use to navigate the city, and which the American military uses to assist with precision attacks. Nuclear attack detection satellites are also an essential part of the nuclear defense strategy. Satellites are essential for the proper functioning of an army and therefore taking the security of these satellites seriously led to the creation of a dedicated military group for this purpose. The last time a direct war between global powers occurred was in World War II, approximately 80 years ago. The world has changed a lot since then, which means there is no war strategy tested on the scale of a total conflict. The exact role of space in a war is still the realm of speculation, training, and planning by military forces. In times of peace, it is part of the military forces' responsibilities to plan for possible hypothetical wars, even if they involve unlikely scenarios, and we can do the same exercise. So what would a real space war be like? Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. Our first scenario is an orbital war, which, as the name suggests, takes place in Earth's orbit. In an orbital war, the targets orbit the planet Earth between 236,000 kilometers, which is equivalent to saying from very low orbits to geostationary orbits. And these distances somewhat represent the gravitational domain of the planet Earth and, consequently, the battlefield of this space war. An orbital war would likely be an extension of a conflict on the surface of the planet, so what would be the objective of a realistic space war, and what strategies would be involved? I have already explained a bit about why satellites and space infrastructure are important. But to reinforce, the American forces and those of various other developed countries heavily depend on the use of information collected by satellites to operate effectively. Disabling part of a country's military satellites in Earth's orbit could give a significant advantage to an adversary. Without the nuclear attack detection satellite, for example, a country would be more vulnerable than ever to nuclear attacks. Even the threat of destroying a satellite should be taken extremely seriously. In real life, this translates to spending resources defending satellites instead of fighting the war here on Earth. And here is an important detail for strategy in war. Not all armies in the world are so dependent on satellites. A modern space war has a quite asymmetric nature. The more important satellites you have, the more targets your enemy has to hit. And more resources you will have to spend defending yourself. Controlling which satellites are operating would be a tremendous advantage in war. And that would be the objective of a space war. To limit what your adversaries can do with their satellites while keeping your own satellites safe and operational. In short, the objective of an orbital space war is to control what can happen in the orbit of planet Earth. If you are a country without satellites fighting against a country with many satellites, you want to destroy the enemy's satellites to disrupt the rival army. And if you are a country that already has satellites, you want to focus on defending yourself and preventing your adversaries from destroying your satellites. With the basic strategy defined, now the question is different. What weapons would be used to achieve these objectives? In 1967, the Outer Space Treaty came into effect, representing the commitment of numerous countries not to place weapons in space. And notably, the treaty was signed by both the United States and the then Soviet Union, which were the two major space and nuclear powers of the time. And this anti-space weapons treaty indeed froze space weapon projects when it came into effect. It would be naive to expect that the treaty would actually be respected during a full-scale war that escalates to space and orbital warfare. But even so, the treaty will be important because it means that probably, when a space war begins, there won't be weapons in space. Or at least, not many. So, how to fight a space war without weapons in space? There are two ways. The first are the so-called dual-use weapons, which are things that are not necessarily weapons but can be turned into weapons in the right situation. For example, most satellites have the capability to receive and transmit radio waves, and this is a normal part of their operation. So it would not be impossible to modify the operation of some of these communication satellites for them to act as jammers. A jammer would emit a huge and intense amount of radio waves across various frequencies, which could disable the communication capabilities of other satellites. 
Such an attack would not be destructive, but it could still disable important parts of the enemy's space infrastructure at critical moments of the conflict. Not to mention that a non-destructive attack would not be as politically damaging as destroying satellites and creating space debris. Another type of improvised weapon in space would simply be to use any space drone satellite capable of maneuvering and setting it on a collision course with its target. Speeds in space are high enough that any collision can damage its target and possibly destroy one or more satellites. In addition to improvised weapons, there is a second way to attack targets in space without having weapons in space, attacks from Earth. It is possible to launch a missile from the ground into space and target an adversary's satellite for destruction. These are anti-satellite weapons, and they will play a central role in an orbital war. They can be launched from both fixed ground platforms and airplanes. Before the space agreement, the United States tested anti-satellite weapons, and they were not the only ones. In fact, Russia resumed its anti-satellite weapons project in 2009 with a practical test in 2021 in which the Russian satellite Cosmos 1408 was destroyed by an anti-satellite weapon launched from the ground. And anti-satellite weapons don't even need to be explosive. It's enough to hit a satellite with a fast enough rocket and that's sufficient to destroy it. This means that satellites with maneuvering capabilities will likely be actively maneuvering and switching between nearby orbits to minimize the chance of being targeted by attacks. However, these maneuvers reduce the rocket's propellant and shorten its lifespan. So even avoiding the attack ends up deteriorating the space infrastructure. In the end, a space war is about cost. Attacking space is expensive and defending space is too. It's unlikely that the war will be decided in space. However, damaging an adversary's space capabilities can be an essential factor in balancing a war that would normally be unbalanced. On the other hand, keeping their military use satellites in space will be a defensive priority. Space infrastructure is both an advantage and a vulnerability. Anti-satellite weapon launch platforms and control centers on Earth are likely to be priority targets in ground warfare due to the importance of space. And that is why the United States created a space force long before it was necessary. And that is why numerous countries test anti-satellite weapons. A new battlefield has emerged with the advancements in space exploration and understanding space warfare might be very important to have a chance in modern warfare. And even if war does not occur, having the capability to destroy space infrastructure can be a useful implicit threat for diplomacy and negotiation during times of political tension. Being ready for war is a way to exert strength even without directly entering a war. Even because a war in space might be useful, but it will have its cost even if no one dies. A battle in low Earth orbit would produce a lot of space debris, and there is a limit to how much space debris can exist in orbit before launching rockets becomes dangerous. This is the so-called Kessler syndrome, a cascading effect in which the generation of space debris leads to more collisions that lead to more space debris. And at the end of the story, it is impossible to launch a rocket without it colliding with space debris. The attempt to dominate space could very well make it impossible to leave the planet and launch new rockets and satellites. The second scenario I want to discuss is a bit more hypothetical. It is the scenario of a true space war. True in the sense that the adversaries will have a significant space presence, both on Earth and on the Moon. A possible reason for this war would be the control of the peaks of eternal light on the moon, which are the small regions at the lunar poles that receive constant sunlight. Controlling these regions means controlling the production of solar energy on the moon, which might be the key to controlling the moon and the rest of space exploration in the future of humanity. This is because the moon will likely serve as a starting point for the rest of the solar system. So the peaks of eternal light may very well become a point of contention between rival space powers in the coming decades or centuries. And in this scenario, the Treaty on the Prevention of the Placement of Weapons in Outer Space has already gone out the window. Weapons in space would likely be common resources for space powers. Even with space weapons, the strategy of this war would probably not be so different. The distances might be greater, and the missiles might be launched directly from satellites in space to other targets in space. But the idea would be the same, to destroy the adversary's space infrastructure and control their ability to launch new satellites and space weapons. One difference would be in scale. An example would be kinetic swarm weapons, which is a fancy term for throwing a bunch of metal pieces at high speed against a satellite. In a kinetic swarm weapon, several small and fast projectiles are launched to cover a larger area and hit even satellites and targets capable of performing evasive maneuvers. The extreme speed in space associated with the vacuum means that any impact will be effective in causing damage. Operating in space is already expensive, so there's no reason to increase the cost with powerful explosives when a very fast missile will cause almost the same damage. Direct energy weapons, based on intense lasers or microwave emissions, could be used to fry nearby satellites. 
And these weapons could be mounted on inexpensive autonomous vehicles, such as drones that orbit the moon or Earth in search of targets. Launching weapons from space to targets in space would be quick and effective. However, these same armed satellites would still be easy targets for other space weapons. So attacks coming from the ground, whether from Earth or the moon, targeting objects in space, would still be quite common. Space weapon launch platforms would be important targets on Earth and the moon in space warfare. A high level of automation would be essential to operate a space war. Being a human in space is already dangerous without war. With war, it is almost impossible to survive. Any manned spacecraft would be an easy target, and any minimally effective attack would be catastrophic in the vacuum of space. It is much more worthwhile to minimize the number of humans involved in a space war, and these humans would likely be hidden in bunkers and safe locations. The main challenge of such a war would be the logistical challenge. With numerous satellites orbiting the Earth and the Moon, communication lines would be constantly changing as the satellites move out of each other's line of sight. Knowing where your satellites are and where the enemy satellites are, as well as the windows for possible attacks, would be the determining factor. More decisive even than the number of weapons in space you have. Because having resources in space also means having more targets to defend. Both launching and defending things in space are extremely expensive and will continue to be costly in this hypothetical future. This could lead to an alternative scenario that is less directly belligerent. A space cold war in which the two rival sides arm themselves to the teeth and develop extreme capabilities to destroy each other's space infrastructure. And in the end, they never engage in a direct war. They compete for dominance by other means. Or perhaps, as humanity leaves Earth, we will leave at least some of our tendency towards violence and division behind and focus on building a less violent future. Space warfare in movies and series is a lot of fun, and lightsabers are cool, but I really hope that large-scale conflict in space remains something only in the realm of fiction. Thank you very much, and may the Force be with you.